Hey everyone, Nathaniel here. I am in Albia, Iowa, in Monroe County, Iowa. And I am doing this video in the snow for uh, a reason which I will get to here very shortly. Um, Monroe County was initially called Kish Kikosh, which was a famous uh, Fox Indian brave. The county was renamed Monroe County later on, obviously in the commemoration of President Monroe after the War of 1812. Uh, this is actually a, a very interesting uh, a city because there's very little history about this town anywhere. Trying to find information about Monroe County and Albia was very, very difficult. Normally I do all these videos based off information I can find in the public square and in, in just public memorials. Um, you know, for example, Monroe was the president. I believe he was the fifth president of the United States. Uh, the Monroe Doctrine we get from him. and. Uh, he was instrumental in helping kind of rebuild the country after um, War of 1812 and uh, fermenting on the, on the control of the United States government of the North American continent. Uh, he also overseen the acquisition of Florida uh, for the final time. It had changed hands a few times. And uh, he was very instrumental in establishing uh, American doctrine that this is America's continent and not Britain's, no longer France's, that they were to get out. <clears throat> The very first court in Monroe County, while it was still called uh, Kish Kikosh, was held uh, at a person's house. His name was uh, John Clark. The residence was in Clarksville at a place called Clark's Point. Very creative, Iowa. Um, the very first judge, uh, his name was Charles Mason. And during this time, the, the house obviously at this time had no floor. So all the court staff, the judge, the jury, the lawyers, <coughs> Pardon me, and the people that were on trial had to sleep on the floor, on the floor like a big slumber party. And the horses were all left outside. Well, during huge storms, uh, kind of like what I'm having right now, the horses were brought inside. So it was kind of, people joke around how the very first court was held in a barn, which kind of by design, but it did, it, it, it did happen that way. The next courthouse uh, was actually built uh, just on the east side of the square in a place they uh, called um, Princeton. They actually called this area Princeton at the time. And the courthouse, a little alley right there, you can see but kind of behind that red car, that's where this little bit like a long log cabin structure was built. And that courthouse was built in 1850 uh, uh, and lasted all the way up uh, until 1860. So there's like around 1846 1850s when that first courthouse was built here. Long log cabin. And most city squares here, as you see, all of these, most of these Iowa towns have these long squares. Well, when that, that first courthouse was demolished, they split the logs and they laid out the sidewalks <clears throat> with the logs from this square, from that old building. And then at this building behind me, the next courthouse was built in 1860. It was a medieval style, Tudor looking style. So if you go to like Freiburg in Germany, a lot of the buildings there, that would have, the courthouse from 1860 to 1902 would have looked like those. In fact, there is a building, <coughs> pardon me, just behind me, it's all lit up over there with the little uh, uh, fast gate decorations with the upstairs lit up. There are pictures of that courthouse in that building. They didn't know that until I got there and pointed it out to them. So that's that's actually also one of the oldest buildings here in town. It used to be a grocery store and a uh, shoe shop, boot shop. Now it's a restaurant slash bar. The courthouse you see behind me is uh, the one that was built in 1903. Well, they, they've completed 19, 1903. The cornerstone was laid on August 29th. 1902 and was completed on October 26, 1903. The architect uh, was an Oliver O. Smith from Des Moines and was built by James uh, Rosen and his son from Iowa City. The building uh, had a giant uh, bell that the county paid $300 for and then the clock tower as you saw uh, they paid just a little under $750 for that. Now the bell was removed from the clock tower in 1970 however they still do have it and i'm going to show it to you here in just a second so th this a lot of a lot of these towns like they, they kept all their stuff they just moved it to really weird places 
As you saw behind me, there is a Civil War monument. Uh, Iowa put so many troops into the Civil War that all of their counties have a monument to the Civil War, all of them. So here is the tower, the, the, the bell that was on top of the courthouse. Now the bell uh, and the tower were made by a German by the name of uh, Seth Thomas. And uh, it still sits here in the city square. They light it up for the holidays. City squares in, in, in Iowa are really pretty during the holiday season. And I think it's awesome that people at these squares are so pretty. If you're in Iowa during the winter time, go drive around the city squares. They're so gorgeous. They're all lit up. I mean, it's not even quite dark yet. You can hear the bells, the lights, they all bright up all kinds of different colors. I love that part about Iowa because they all have their own different flavors. Now, for the city of Albia, now the city of Albia, the name Albia, which is the reason why I'm doing this in the winter, it's Latin. It means white or fair. And so that's why I'm doing this in the winter when it's snowing because it fits the name of the town. Now the town, first time the name Albia was ever found in court records or any documentation, was July 4th, 1848. However, the, entire, the actual incorporation of the city of Albia did not take place until uh, March 26th of uh, 1859, which is not all that uncommon for towns here in Iowa. The state didn't become a state until 1846. And so um, a lot of these towns on the border of Missouri were all kind of founded without being incorporated. They did it all really in a big hurry because they were worried that there were going to be more complications with the state of Missouri. Uh, this was still during the Honey War, of course, and even though Monroe County is not at the Missouri border, it is close, and there were concerns of longer uh, complications with the border dispute between the state of Missouri and the state of Iowa. So that's basically, in a nutshell, the state, uh, the city of Albia, the city of Albia in Monroe County. Uh, interesting place. The, the, the mascot's called the Blue Demons. Uh, it's changed around. No one here knows really much about their history, and that's kind of sad. I hope Albia uh, and Monroe County work on that because it's part of community. It's part of understanding where you're from and, and pride in the places that you live in. So uh, I, for the people here of Albia, I challenge you to do more research and to look into the details of your town um learn about some of your about some of your other communities like georgetown and melrose one of the uh, largest uh mining catastrophes in the state happened in february 14th 1893 just this north this west of here um seven people died one person killed immediately it was it was a huge disaster all these mining towns have histories of people working to support their families and accidents and you know this part of you know that time of life and there's very little record of it at all uh in like Albia, Oskaloosa, Centerville, Cincinnati, Mystic, uh, Fort Bloomfield, all these were, were, were uh, mining towns uh, and unionized the mine, but there's very little record of any of these people um, throughout most of this part of the state. And uh, that's unfortunate. So <clears throat> I'm gonna sign off now because it's cold outside and I got a friend's birthday party I gotta go to. But uh, this is Albia, Iowa, Monroe County. Stop by. Um, there is a lot of other cool things here in town, which I just don't have time to go to all right now. Thank you for your time and have a wonderful day. Uh, peace out.